everybody back with another video of course um, this one I have been putting off for a very long time and this is a f um, buddy arcade buddies uh, board the arcade buffet you guys I'll link to his channel as well um, but he gave me this I don't even, it's got to been over a year ago and I'm going to try to fix it that's what we're doing got a Mike's arcade Nintendo JAMA adapter on here and um, obviously he has a double um, D2K, Donkey Kong 2000, I guess, um, uh, Braze kit on there. And let me see. Definitely have some EPROMs with, you know, uncovered windows and stuff like that. So, and then some other EPROMs that have been burned. Let's power it on and see what we get. Says RAM okay, CPU okay. Looks like everything's good, right? So it's probably not ROM or RAM related based off of the uh, test there. Are those colors right? Kind of looks like it. Uh-oh. <laughs> we got Donkey Kong. <laughs> I mean, Mario is upside down. The colors do look a little off, but that could be based off of this jam adapter. I don't know just looks he's Mario definitely looks off um, Donkey Kong split in half his his torso is up up top but flipped upside down yeah there's some weird color things going on there with uh, Donkey Kong's face most of the characters look okay though like all the lettering looks fine and I think there's some sound issues too let's see Yeah, look, look at Donkey Kong there. That's messed up. Mario looks good up here. Oh, that's not right. So there's some color issues with Donkey Kong and Mario. And Pauline is split in half. And her halves are upside down of each other. Um... There's gotta be some TTL somewhere. Hmm. I don't know exactly where I'm gonna start at, except for I probably get this board, I guess, um, off of the metal plate so I can spray it out, lay it out a little bit. But um, it looks like I'm gonna have to do a lot of reading because I've never worked on a Nintendo board, so. We'll figure it All out, right, so hopefully. I probably didn't have to do this, but I just figured it'd be easier for me to work on by laying the boards out this way. I have my CPU board hooked up to my jam adapter, getting its uh, voltage that way. And then I have the video board. I just am using jumpers to um, C1, this capacitor 1. I think it's C1, yeah, C1 right there is for your 5 volts. So I hooked up my negative there, and then C2 is for your negative 5 volts, and you want to hook up your negative 5 volts to the negative side of that capacitor. This positive side is actually tied to ground. Um, and then obviously that comes in, where does that go? I think it's these 3C and 4C, I think are... Rams or something um, for the video section, but anyway, I think I believe my problem is on uh, is definitely on this video board because we have and I'll give kudos or um, props to Adam at One Circuit because I just got through watching some of his videos and way you know just basically schooling me like this guy's upside down that's kind of weird. Um, but it looks like the sprites are all good, but it's the, um, and the characters are good. No, the sp it's the sprites that are bad. The tiles are probably good, but these sprites are bad, I guess. Or maybe the instructions for the uh, drawing the Donkey Kong. So I think, I want to check these ROMs. I might just swap them out with my working board ROMs real quick. This is the character stuff, so I don't think we have to be worried about here. I think we're going to be worried about up here for this, um to fix the video issue so that's what I'm gonna do first I'm just gonna pull these ROMs out put my ROMs in 
and then I might verify them. There's no sense of even using the fluke because the fluke's not going to be able to, you know, read or write to any of these, um, any of the video circuitry. Alright, I, I did think. that and we still have issues, obviously. I didn't think it was going to be that easy because somebody else would have probably already tried that and tested those, so we still have the issue. Mario's upside down. Something, I think, is up with the barrels, I'm not sure, but we got our character, I mean, our characters, our sprites are um, split in half. So, something definitely in the sprite section, I think. What do we have here? What? It's working? No, not yet. Because I have a, my own personal working Donkey Kong board, which is a TKG TKG 411. Buffet's is a TKG 413, so both of his boards are 13. But I was thinking, I've been doing a lot of wa watching other people's videos like Adam's and Arcade Doc and stuff like that. Um, and I was assuming that the problem was on the video board, um, but I just wanted to make sure, you know what I mean, like eliminate any communication going back and forth to the CPU board. Since I had the board, I figured I'd just hook it up real quick and um, prove that it is 100% on the video board. All right, so I wasn't even going to hook up my Fluke. I was suspecting that the issue, because of the colors, um, because the colors were slightly off, as well as the sprites, I thought it was going to be somewhere in the schematic where the color lines and the sprite um, out of the sprite ROMs like the output of this goes into some muxes and then it gets combined um, onto the some color uh, lines and because the colors were off and the sprites were off I was thinking oh it's got to be one of those oh it's not over there it's over here <laughs> these are the these are your uh, sprite ROMs um, and I was thinking it was, was going to be somewhere there because both symptoms you had some slight colors off and you had the sprites off but because I was doing some research and the guys on YouTube, like Adam from One Circuit, um, at least showed me his notes, I wrote down this stuff because it looks like MAME might be off as far as what the range of the RAM is. MAME says 6000 to 6FF. And then I've looked at a couple other people and they were saying that the, the memory map for RAM was 6000 for the working RAM or program RAM was 6000 to 6BFF. And then you have some video RAM from 7000 to 73FF, 7400 to 77 FF. I think that is also in, in the main driver files. Um, but the Braze kit said that the RAM was good, right? I mean, but maybe it, I, when I want to run this here, let's run RAM short to 7000. To 73 FF, I got a, a data error right away. Oh, I had a BTS error before. Why am I getting? I'm getting a different error now. Oh, I can't repeat that crap. Oh, it was in there. You had glare there. It's a bad angle. Ram short seven. Four zero zero enter to seven seven. I'm not sure exactly which RAM this is. I'm gonna have to go back up and look at the main driver again, I guess. But this is part of the video RAM. And that's good. But if I go to seven thousand Let me just go to 7,000. Interesting. Hmm. Why wouldn't I... For it's t tied high. Ram bits for tied high. Read right error. Huh. 
I, I mean, I'm just hitting repeat because um, I'm learning how to use this fluke and a lot of people just say, oh, I, they just stop at the first error. But I, I think that it's interesting that if I run it multiple times and it's giving me different errors every time, you know what I mean? And then it actually passes. Ram short at 7,000, okay. But then it says, you know, bit three's tied. Is that data bit three? I assume it is, right? DE loop bits, uh, BTS DE, which is, a, I assume is a lot of bits in the data. And there's four tied. Zero one. And then it's okay. Huh. So it's like, it's kind of interesting, right? Well, that's RAM short. Anyway, there's got to be, I got to do some research and figure out what this RAM is. Um, I don't know. Well, the good news is that this hopefully is some, something somewhat easy to fix. Um, I just need to find out where that RAM is and then start probing around and looking at the data lines um, to try to determine whether it's the uh, RAM chip or something else driving or like a buffer coming out of the RAM or whatever um, is the RAM chip. So I wasn't even going to put the Fluke on it because I was like, oh, the brace kit says RAM's fine. Memory's fine. Test the video RAM and it looked good. So... Why would I put the fluke on? But obviously, it's a good thing I did because now I have a clue of where to start at, I guess, versus what I was going to do before. So I was thinking about it, and I'm like, well, maybe the braze kit is doing something that's allowing that um, us to read and write to the the VRAM, and I wasn't able to do it on the board because maybe there's a problem on the CPU board. Um, writing to that RAM. I don't know. So I put my braze kit, I mean, I put the braze kit back in and I put my fluke on the braze kit, but now I'm getting, you know, crap, um, pod timeout, but my pod's fine. I, I tested it and everything. So for some reason, I'm not able to run. If I put the regular CPU back in here, that we have the same situation we had before, so I don't get it. Maybe, maybe um, the fluke doesn't want to run through the brace kit for some reason. It's weird, but I guess I'm gonna have to, you know, ignore the brace kit and um, probably get it working because there's probably a problem on the CPU board that this is fixing or addressing. I would think potentially, which kind of sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, let me figure out Just something to, to show that the pod is fine. So it's definitely not a pod issue, I don't think, so. And before it goes off the screen, obviously the brace kit's still working. So I don't get it. I don't understand why I can't run the fluke through the brace kit, but, I mean, it's still the same behavior as before. I haven't, I haven't fixed anything, obviously. So I really, to get this board working right, I need to fix. I need to fix it without the brace kit, I guess, because the brace kit is d covering up some other failure. So let me take this brace kit out and put my fluke back in and fix writing to the VRAM, and then I don't think that's what our issue is. But then we can address that. Just documenting. We're back in with the fluke um, and I might as well just go ahead and see if I can read and write to to ROMs and stuff like that um, I have the, those signatures documented and everything so let me go ahead and do that see if I can at least read and write to these program ROMs it looks like I'm gonna have to troubleshoot the CPU board first and then move on to this everything without the braze kit all right all right, I, get, I guess I'll just video document the results, so ROM A, um, what is it, ROM E is fine. All right, that's ROM C, I think, right, ROM C, looks good. So it says uh, ROM error at 2000, wrong signature, EF6D, 
instead of 8BD8. So let me pull that ROM and uh, dump it and burn it, burn a new one. All right, so I'm over here at my ROM burning station here and trying to read it says device insertion failure bad contact at pin 24 so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take it out and put it in the socket and then then try to reread it so either the ch there's something wrong with the chip or it's just not the legs aren't clean or something so I'm just gonna put it in the socket real quick and try reading it again okay so I have it in its socket and it's still do I have it in the right yeah have it in the right spot too still can't read it something wrong with that 2532 I would expect because it that's a machine pin socket right there and it had to have been making at least some decent contact and pin 24 I don't even know what that is 24 is actually um, VCC 5 volts so I don't know how how did the fluke even get a signature from this chip if uh, something's wrong with it I don't know I might clean up the legs and, and but I'm gonna burn a new one and screw it actually <clears throat> have these um, see if you can see it JM 2532s I don't know I don't even know who makes those I didn't look it up but I just am programming it as a 2532 TMS 2532 looks like it's programming what it okay I, what I like about the this uh, programmer it's B and K but I'm using the uh, L E L NEC software for it but um it verifies it at the VCC max and at VCC minimum so it's uh, 5 volts plus 10 percent and 5 volts minus 10 percent um, and I like that so it verified the chip twice so we know it's good at both higher voltage as well as lower voltage let me put that in the dock right, uh, have the at the board and I've never done this before so can I loop this and have it do it again or maybe repeat okay I just hit repeat instead and we'll wait to see what it comes back with it says our signature is good now on that one so I have one more ROM to read I think and that, um, that I can read and I'll come back okay so we are ROM 5a which is right here um, is good with that signature right there so all of our ROMs now we can um, read them and they read correctly so now on to figuring out why can't I read and write to 700 to 73 FF all right so I went ahead and just to eliminate or identify whether it was the CPU board or a video board issue put my video board back on and I cannot read or write to either 7000 to 73 FF or 7400 I can't write to the to the video RAM I can write to the sprite area let's do a RAM short um, 6 9 Zero, zero. Enter to six A seven F. Enter. So I don't really know enough about the Donkey Kong boards. I have to research some to understand what's different about reading and writing to the Sprite RAM. Um, because it does say RAM here, 6,000 to 6BFF. Oh, that's the RAM 3A6, oh yeah, duh, because this, I don't know where I got this from, this might have been from, um, oh, maybe this is... The direct the DMA stuff going it gets read here and then goes somewhere here or something I don't know um, but this is obviously part of the RAM chips at 3A 4A 3B 4B 3C 4C so it has to be doing something maybe with the DMA stuff because I think 
on the braze kit. Maybe he's building some of that DMA logic into here or something. Hmm. I have to think about that. Um, because, yeah, 6900 to 6A7F is in this range between uh, 6800 and 6BFF. It's covered. It's covered by 3A and 4A. And 3A and 4A are right here. These are, what, 2114s? Yeah, 2114s right there. 3A and 4A. Those two. So th all of this RAM right here is good. But we cannot read to any of the RAM that's on the video board. And so it has to be going through some other chip. I have to look to see what chip on the CPU board is part of reading and writing to the RAM on the video board. All right, let me look at this. All right, I'm just kind of kind of screwing around, but um, I wanted to verify yeah, that I could um, write or look at the lines and stuff to the memory of um, 7000 and 7400. Also, I didn't know what 7000 to 73FF is and 7400 to 77FF. This I had written down because I saw it on another video. Maybe Ar um, Adams or Ar Arcade Doc or something. But what I did is I'm writing to that memory and I know that I'll look at, I'll show you the schematic in a second. But two, it's toggling, right? 2C pin 14 is toggling when I write to 7400 memory address space, which is the video RAM. And then if I look over here and I track my VRAM right, if you can see that. If I track that down, that comes to 2C pin um, 14. And then pin 15, which is the 7000, is the object right. So I'm able to, you know, when I'm writing, I'm getting those toggling. So I kind of, I basically am just eliminating the right aspect of this because the, these address lines when the CPU is addressing that memory space, it's using these address lines, obviously A10 and A11, um, to, and then it'll come in, was it 2C? Yeah, 2C, and then these are the outputs of that. So it looks like that's working correctly. One thing I don't understand though is I cannot get that to show up on my scope at all. It was 2C pin 14. Let's double check. 2C pin 14. Yeah. That's my logic probe. 2C pin 14. And I'm adju I adjusted my scope. I mean, I'm doing it with one hand now, but I can't get that. I can't get it to show the transition. I'm like, what the? What am I doing wrong? I mean, I'm. I'm. A, I adjust my seconds per division. And I, I don't see any toggling at all. But on my logic probe, I can hear it toggling. Which doesn't make, I don't know, it doesn't make sense to me. So, I have to think about that. I've never even used an oscilloscope before getting this hobby, so. Alright, so. Let me um, read. Show something here real quick. I'm going to read. 7,000. And I'm gonna loop that. See what see what the fluke's doing there? I mean, it it stops because it's getting some type of error when it's reading it. It's getting different data. If you look at it, address okay, pod timeout, address okay, pod timeout. I don't know. It kind of looks weird, but I don't know. Is that the reproduction pod that's doing it? Who who knows? Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean. Um, but it definitely does not like reading to this area. And I know that 7A and 7A and 8A 
have to do with the address lines going to the video board, I believe. And when I look, when I look at the enable pins, I, I don't know. Crap! Let me see. I'm not going to be in the way. Um, pin one is the enable for like four of the inputs of this. This is like a hex buffer, I think. So pin one is active low. And I assume it's just tied low all the time. Right? But pin 15 is the other enable. And it's pulsing. I just, I don't know if, if it should be doing that or not. I, only 7A. This 8A is controlling four. is buffers for four dress lines. And 7A is a buffer for six address lines um, so that's what I say six and four so ten in all I think that's right zero through nine I believe um, and and 15 on 8a doesn't really matter that's toggling but because we're not using those I just don't know if it should be toggling or not on 7a and it's giving me an address address errors. So, like, by the I way, just a, a reminder for myself to check this. This one in is it this one? Yeah, this is pretty hot. This one in right here, and I don't feel if I leave my finger on this one. No, that one's hot too. Yep, all of these are freaking pretty hot. I don't know if they're supposed to be or not, but one L, one M. Um, one N, they're uh, 74 S 163s, but this is my my video board, so I guess that's normal. Hmm. Those S chips running hot as hell. 74 S 161, I think. Um, anyway, I put on my logic comparator with a LS 367, which which is what these are. And it looks good. I mean, you can't really see that, but if I do a read, or let me do a ram short. So, nah, stop that. Let's just do a read. Read 700 and loop that. God darn it. See, address error at 7,000. Hmm. All right, so I put in my board set. This is my board set. I wanted to see what's going on here. Um, pin 15 of these, which is G2, is also toggling on mine. Probably driven by some type of clock circuit or something. I don't know what it's driven by. Um, but when I'm now I'm getting RAM shorts on mine too so I think I think there's something going on with my my pod or, or something else I, I don't I can't run unit under test I know this board's working um, if I hit RAM short 7000 to 73 FF I'm getting read write errors the only thing that's con I mean, I, this is common here, so I'm gonna take off my fluke, put in my CPU, and boot, boot my board yeah, I mean, up. Here. I booted up my board, it's working fine. So, obviously, a red herring here about being able to read and write to that memory. That's taking me a whole bunch of time here. Um, but the Z80 pod looks good. I might try it again with a different socket, but I'm gonna put um, Buffet's boards back on here and uh, with just a a ROM chip and see if we get it to boot um, and then still have the same graphics. All right, issue. this is Buffet's CPU board with his Z80 in there um, and my graphics board. So definitely um, nothing wrong with the CPU board. So the fluke totally led me astray. Something's going on with the Z80 pod or something, or maybe because of the way the Nintendo sockets are, it doesn't um, get in there good enough or something. I, I don't know. Something's totally jack. I don't know. It's disappointing. <laughs> but uh, it looks good right now. 
So let me put his board, his video board back on there. So we really do only have right, a video back to board. Square issue. one, no braze kit on buffet's board, CPU, everything seems to be. I mean, it's still same symptoms as before. So screw the fluke. I don't know why it's behaving the way it is, but um, I'll have to do something about that later. So now I have to start troubleshooting. Um, where I initially thought it <laughs> just go straight to where the colors and uh, on the video board the colors and the um, sprites kind of intermingle I think is where I'm gonna look at yeah still broken but I got <clears throat> damn can't talk um, I got sidetracked actually a little bit because I was tired of I finally broke down and wired up my little Sega controller I, I didn't film this but I actually had to take this apart and then um, do cut some traces on the PCB and stuff. Maybe if I do another one, I have one more of these. If I do another one, I'll make a video of it or something. But And then I use this little thing here so I can actually control it. So I have the up, down, left, right, three buttons, wired, plus player one start. And when I did that, I found something else that's wrong with this board. So let me coin up here. And then I will press start. Got that right. Let me see. If, can I get both in the screen at the same time? So we got that audio issue. We know that's that's wrong. The running sounds good, but look, I cannot move left. And I double checked my controller job. It is actually. It's kind of weird, actually. Do I want to show this? I'll show this real quick. Maybe I'll get it on a tripod and I'll show this. Turn off the game, and I'm going to use my zoom out just a tad bit, I guess. Can you see that? Yeah, whatever. You can hear the beeping. All right. If I turn it to ohms, actually, I guess you can hear the beeping. Yeah. So you don't need to see that. All right. So. Just to show you, I gotta zoom out a little bit. Screwing around here, sorry guys. All right, so on pin eight, I have um, ground wired up, and pin three is my left, and I'm pressing left, and I'm getting continuity right. But when the game's off, none of these pins are tied to ground right but what I think is happening I haven't looked at the Nintendo schematic is when I power up the game these pins are brought low by the PCB when I power up the game um, I will have continuity between my ground pin on the controller and every other one so I'm gonna do that real quick and I'm on pin 8 and you can see if I go to the ones that are actually connected to something like pin one or two or four which is uh, right five which is player one start that's button one I think but pin three there is no connectivity so there is something wrong on the board with the uh, move moving left um, probably, you know, it's got to come in here, go through these resistors and these, oops, sorry, go through these, um, probably these resistors and these capacitors into, I think it's probably these chips here, these, uh, 74LS240s. I don't know which ones it's got you know it's going to be over here probably somewhere I have to look it up but I'm just I as I was screwing with this thing and wiring this together so I could actually like have a controller and move shit around um, I discovered that I couldn't move left and then I was troubleshooting it so I figured I'd, I'd show that and then that's one more thing on this board we got to fix that um, no no player movement going to the left so we got graphics issue we got sound issue. Um, did fix that ROM. 
I'm curious. I still have that old ROM. I wonder. Let's power it up with that old ROM in there real quick and see what it looks like. That it was this one right here. Because it wouldn't read in my um, EEPROM burner. I wonder if it works. Right, I have that EEPROM back in there. That we couldn't read in the EEPROM burner, and I couldn't read with the fluke. But who knows what's going on with my fluke? It looks like it's working. Oh boy, that's a lot worse. <laughs> so I guess that that is probably bad. It's probably not even getting half of the program data. So even though it's booting, because oh boy, just game ended on its own. So yeah, so this this EEPROM is definitely trash. So I did fix something, just didn't know it because the brace kit was bypassing these program ROMs here. Um, so I didn't realize, you know, we didn't know that that was a problem, but that definitely was a problem that's fixed. So I actually can say I fixed something so far. All right, it's getting late tonight, so I'll have to come back and look at this another day. Right, getting back at this thing after at least a week, I guess. We will start it. And um, basically, what is it left? I think is pin two on this P5 connector right there. I just hooked up something right here. So let's see what we get. I'm gonna move right. And then we'll move this. Oh, died before I could do it. <laughs> yeah. left here. Alright, let's oh. try this again. So, moving to the right, and then we'll touch this, and we're moving to the left. So the issue here is um, my adapter. I actually ohmed it out, and there is a broken trace on the underside of this thing. Yeah, let's see if you can see this okay right here comes from like pin 10 over here or L or whatever gets to this spot right there and then between this and right there is bad so I'm not gonna put it on the tripod but I basically just figured it out by um, ohming it out and then testing manually to ground with this so that is the issue it's not on the board so I'm going to fix my adapter here real quick, and then we'll move on to either the sound or the video section. All right, a little bit of uh, Kynar wire there. Just went through the two holes, and we should be good to go here. Go to pin 2 of P5 to left. Pin 1 to right we're good all right so that's fixed and we had nothing to do with the board so let's get started on the video part okay so I think I'm making some progress anyway I figured I would just start looking at the schematic seeing where these um, maybe object ROMs or sprite ROMs or whatever you want to call them yeah where these sprite ROMs go and they basically come into um, these LS 299s and I wasn't I didn't even know what those were um, but I figured I would look them up real quick this is actually Buffet's board right here and they are 8-bit universal shift storage registers and it's pretty freaking complicated for me anyway but there's a ton of stuff going on here um, but what I basically did is look at the schematic start marking out you know what pins do what and then recording based off of the schematic whether you know they're tied high or, or something like that and basically the clear and then look at the function table here and and it's, it looks like the clear is always high 
um, the clear signal is always high. So, um, and so if that's the case, I can pretty much ignore, <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, any, because it's only active when it's low. So I can pretty much ignore this whole thing. That's how I'm reading it. I'm not an expert. So that's how I'm kind of progressing through here. And then I was looking at, um, S zero and S one and then also G1 and G2, as you can see here. And G1 and G2 are also always tied high, um, which kind of doesn't make sense to me um, because then I pretty much can ignore almost everything except for the load. So I don't know if there is any shifting going on with these or not um, because obviously if G1 and G2 are always high, and it looks like they are. They look based off of the schematic. I'll show you in a second. It looks like they are tied. Mario, actually, let me pajamas on here. Very comfortable here in Corona, Corona time. Don't even leave the house. Um, but here's the ROMs, and this this diagram was done by Smokinator on Clove. He hasn't finished it, but it's definitely a lot more clear if you can actually see it here. Um, but basically, you know, from these ROMs, it comes into these shift registers. And you can see pin 9, pin 2, and 3. Pin 9, 2, and 3, I think, are all tied high. Yeah. And then pin 1, which is um, S0. And where's S1 at? And pin 19 come up over here to this um, 8B LS157. So I don't know what's going on there, but basically S0, S1, and then um, are you know doing something to control this chip, what this 8-bit register is doing. G1, G2, and clear are all tied high based off of these resistors here. And then um, you got the clock signal coming in, and then you have like SR and some Qs like these two are, are kind of working together somehow. I don't quite understand it. And these two are working um, together. So that's where we come back to our function table here. And so if G1 and G2 are always tied high, right? And we're, we don't, and clear is always high. So we can ignore clear and we can ignore all of these where G1 and G2 are low because they're always high. It really only gives us this load so are these shift registers really just acting as like an input output driver or something um, and, and the only thing that's happening is S1 and S0 should be toggling I guess um, because clear is always going to be high um, and basically ignore it doesn't matter what G1 and G2 are doing but they're definitely never going to be low and so that's the only thing we have and because we have A, B, and then you got two outputs, which are A and H. So, don't really understand what's going on, but enough to know that this is kind of, this load is pretty much, I think, the only line I care about. And I need to look at S1 and S0. And S1 and S0 are pin 19 and pin 1. And this is my board because basically pin... One was stuck high all the time on Buffet's board. So I'm going to show you what it's doing on a working board first. We'll, we're, we're going to probe pin 1 and pin 19, show you on my working board, put Buffet's board back on, um, show you that uh, pin, nine, pin 1 is tied high, and then go from there, trace it yeah. back, I guess. got my working board going on here. Let's bring up my logic probe over here, and we're going to go to pin 1. And you can see it's going nuts in pin 19. Going nuts. One. 19. All right, knocking shit off. Pin one. 19. One. And 19. So these seem to be working correctly, and if uh, if you check two, I think that's what G1 and G2. Those are, are um, 
tied high, and then I closed my book, but the clear was also tied high. So those are tied high, probably from these resistors here, R44 and R34. R34 and R44 probably what are tying those high, so based off of the schematic. So let me um, put buffet's board in there. We'll show uh, pin one is not right, working. Right. I have buffet's board back on, and yeah, see, I'm just not good enough where I don't, you know, I'm not, I don't trust myself enough to work on stuff without actually having a known working example. Just having the known working example kind of helps compare when you, I do get to a spot where I'm like, hey, that doesn't seem right. What's it look like on a working board? And you can see that's pin one. And it is stuck high on every single one of these because they're all tied together. And I believe that comes to this LS157. Let me see what pin that actually goes to. I have to look at the schematic, but it comes from this one. So I don't know, this could be bad or one of the inputs in this could be bad. So um, I'm gonna have to check that, but I think I can actually put this on my logic comparator because I can test a 157, I think with my comparator so let me figure out what the pin is and then we'll go to a logic comparator probably all right that line actually comes to pin 12 so we're at uh, 9 10 11 12 is high and it's not warm or anything so let me probably hit the logic comparator or I might look I'll just look up the schematic real quick maybe or do a logic comparator I keep wanting to use my logic right, so comparator. it's kind of hard to see I guess but have my logic comparator on there with the LS157 chip and none of the lights are lighting up so I expect that one of the inputs is grounded and that's not our, our problem chip but I'm gonna probe it out here real quick but this is making me believe that that chip is not bad. Okay, I broke out the schematic a little bit and I probed those two lines, which are basically, I think that's 3A and 4B or whatever. So 9 is controlled by 10 and 11. And 11 is always grounded, which I think is the B signal or the A, one of the A signals or something. And then 12 is the other... Um, select right and that's high and it's controlled by 13 and 14 so 14 is moving but 13 is high and when you look at this basically the like the truth table yeah you know, I have one B that's you know always high and one A that's always high so the thing the thing that's making it change from A to B is really the chip select so pin 1 which is, I think it's called the select, right? Yeah, select, um, which is pin one, should be toggling, so that's going back and forth between A and B, and then um, in, in that fashion. So if I come to pin one, and I know I'm not doing a great job of explaining this, I am learning as I go, guys, so, you know, I have to read the schematics and try to make sense of it, and, and then look at the uh, data sheet, so, Let's track down uh, pin one, that's why. Pin one, the select is stuck high, as you can see. And I need to look at the schematic and right, see where that's that goes. being driven by pin five of 6K uh, LS377. Pin five of uh, 6K, so let me All right, check so that. that 6K, which is right here, is a something quad octal flip-flop I think it's eight octal flip-flop and basically besides your um, I guess probably your enable or whatever and your clock you know three what's on three is flipped on pin uh, to two I don't really understand everything but you know you get the idea what is that whatever that logic symbol is <laughs> um, but basically, you know, if you have activity on three, you should have activity on two. If you have activity on four, you should have activity on five. S seven should have activity on six. So if I look at it here, two and three are the same. Four is the input to five, which is the issue we have, which is high. 
and then seven goes to six, and then eight to nine, I think. Right. Yeah. So I this chip is going is okay. I think it's pin four, so we got to keep going backwards. Find out why is pin four stuck high. So it goes to six J. So, oh, actually, okay. So, whatever that pin was. <laughs> Damn, losing my track here. Um. Yeah. So six K pin five was high. That led me to the input of that, which is pin four of six K. That was high, which goes to pin sixteen of six J, which is another flip flop, a LS two seventy three. And that is driven by pin 17. So I need to look at pin 17, which um, drives the output pin 16 of 6J. 6J is right here. That's 20, 19, 18, 17 is the input. And that's bad, right? I, I think we found our problem. Because if you look at these, those look normal. Yeah, I think uh, 6J LS273. I need to, I need to replace that. So let me go ahead and break out the soldering iron and uh, see if we can replace this and get this game working. Okay, we got uh, the LS 6J LS273 socketed. And I think, am I okay? I'm gonna get this stuff out of the way before I short something out here. Um, all right, let's power it on. See, see what we got here. Keep your fingers crossed. Oh yeah, colors, everything's fixed. That's nice. All right, let me, um, that's awesome. Just that one little thing fixed it. That wasn't actually too hard. And then I, you know, messing around. Well, actually, I won't finish the video. I think we have to fix the sound, right? So we'll fix the sound, but graphics issue fixed. That feels good. All right, it's the next day in the morning back at this, though. I think I'm getting close. I was doing a lot of, I was watching some of Adam's One Circuit's videos again and then went on Mike's Arcade just to research this a bit and looking at the schematic. So I was just like kind of spending like at least an hour or so just trying to figure out the sound circuit and what components were in the sound circuit. So it's kind of in this area of the CPU board. These are the uh, two sound ROMs at, um, what is that, 3F and 3H. This isn't always obvious, <clears throat> you know what I mean, to me anyway, because um, I've never even worked on this board. And you also can control with VR2, the volume of only the digital sound. So there's analog sounds, um, like the jumping and running. And when I was looking at the schematic, I knew there was one more analog so sound and I couldn't figure out what it was. Um, and these are the EPROMs here, but um, for the digital sounds. And Mike's Arcade said that the noise, like the growl or whatever you want to call it, went at, what Donkey Kong does at the top um, during the intro screen, um, is it a growl, eh, 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 whatever that is, um, is just, is a digital sound. And so I figured what I would do is just swap buffets or the non-working board um, EPROMs for mine real quick and just verify that the uh, EPROMs are correct. So let's go ahead and coin up. That sounds much better. So I know that these, one of these EPROMs is bad. And so I'm going to go to my uh, EPROM programmer and verify these ROMs and burn a new one. And then I'll be ready. So I have a 3F in there. And when I read that with my EPROM burner, I get another device insertion error. It says uh, bad contact at pin 12. And let me see what. Okay, pin just to be thorough, I put it in a socket and re try to verify it again. 
and it failed. So <clears throat> we'll do it again. And pin 12 is actually ground. That's my bad. Um, pin 12 is ground, so for some reason something's wrong with this chip right here. This 3F. All right, I have the new um, ROMs burnt. Turn that on. Coin up. See what we get. So it looks like it's all fixed. Everything looks good. All right, so one other thing that I thought was interesting is, um, let me actually power cycle this thing, is because I was interested in what the third analog sound was. I know there was, I think there is three. And this VR2, this VR2 controls the um, digital sounds. So if we turn down the digital sounds all the way, we should be able to hear which are the three analog sounds. Um, so let me go ahead and coin up. And you didn't hear anything. Starting this. So we're not hearing anything until he jumps on the girder. So that's one analog sound. And we can tell that his growl there at the is definitely a digital sound. And running is analog. So there you go. That's the, the sound. So, Buffet, your board, um, as much as I can do, I guess, is basically working. And I think this is a special board because somebody signed it um, for, for Buffet. So, anyway, sorry it took me so long, man, to, to uh, actually put this on the bench and start looking at it. My first Nintendo repair, so I wasn't, I was kind of not anxious to dive in, I guess. But now that it's working, pretty excited. So, Buffet, here you go. This is your board. I'll put it back on the the, uh, the metal sheet or whatever, the frame, and then um, make arrangements to get it back to you. Cheers.